Alright, hello and welcome to this uh, Project Starters tutorial. Uh, Project Starters is a game you find on Roblox, which is more geared towards like fighting spaceships in spaceships. So uh, yeah, let's just uh, get right started here. Now the first thing you are greeted with once you click the play button is the lobby list. Now here, since I'm going to assume you're a new player, uh, you have the tier 1 and 2 lobby available to you. These other two here are barred off. Uh, these two aren't really too important for you right now and you should probably only focus on joining this one right here so we'll just do that uh, usually you'd want to join a server with more people as there's usually more action and it does make the grind faster so we'll just go ahead and do that right now now what you want to do when you first i guess join the game is to choose a tech tree that you want to grind down of course you can choose multiple there's nothing wrong with that and uh, you have a total of well six tech trees but i'm going to leave the special one now so you have five tech trees that you can choose from, uh, them being Halo, as you can see right here, Mass Effect, SPY, Star Wars, and The Expanse. Now for starters, um, or for new players, maybe I'd recommend the Star Wars tree, as it's probably one of the more uh, bigger ones, and it's also maybe yeah, more approachable for people who, I don't know, watch the Star Wars movies or something. But then again, other tech trees are also very fun, and they each have their respective like meta vehicle, so you're not really going to miss out if you choose uh, really any faction because they're all relatively strong. Now once you have chosen a tech tree that you want to play, I guess you can take a bit of a closer look at it and see that, you know, each tech tree kind of has like sub-factions. For example, Star Wars here has the Rebels, the Imperials, uh, the First Order is kind of down here in this corner, and you also have the Sis ships as well, which are available to you. And you know, they all each have their unique playstyles. I mean, you can kind of get a general trend of what type of vehicle they are by kind of seeing what class they are for example if you want to go for carriers uh you can just go uh where is it hold on the carriers yeah sometimes it's a bit of a trouble to find them but here we go here's the carrier line or one of the carrier lines in the star wars tree where it goes from the venator to the Secutor, and eventually to the lucre hulk and excubiter but uh yeah each tech tree kind of have those like special lines and i guess you can kind of yeah, go to a path that you want to play. And for example, if you want to shoot people a lot, then, you know, stuff like the Starhawk is really fun to play. Or the Resurgent. I mean, they're all pretty good ships as long as they're rank 5. So yeah, you're not really going to go wrong, but just make sure that you're getting a ship that you actually want to play when you kind of first uh, research down a line. Now, before you spawn in, you kind of want to check how your ship will perform. And the way you do that is you go check the statistics. Now here on the stat page, it's on the bottom right of your ship, um, but you basically kind of can check how maneuverable your ship is, how durable your ship is, what kind of damage your ship can do, and after that, I guess the requirements to unlock it. But, um, you know, if you have the ship, you don't really have to pay attention to that, or you just don't because, well, you've already bought it. Um, in the agility section, it basically tells you how fast your ship is and how maneuverable your ship is. This tells you, I guess, how fast you can do, what kind of strategies you can use, which we'll get to later on in the tutorial. But um, yeah, if your speed is like under 12 ZKT or 13, then consider yourself on the slower end. If you're above 15, then that's yeah more of a faster ship, which you can kind of yeah use to kind of maneuver around a bit more. Um, maneuverability kind of tells you how fast you can pitch up and down. Um, you know, the higher the better. So yeah, just kind of keep that in mind. And finally, the game length tells you how big the ship is in game. So how big of a target you are. The smaller, the better, of course, because then it's harder to hit you. But I guess, uh, yeah, it's good to know if you kind of want to develop a strategy for playing your ship. Now, in the second part of the snap page, you'll see that you have, uh, yeah, your durability stats. And you can see that I have like, health, shields, and respawn time. Uh, health can be split into, uh, yeah, just normal ship health. It's usually not regenerable unless you're in a special ship or two special ships. I think the Rocinante and Rocinante Refit in the, not Mass Effect, in the Expanse Tree have a self heal ability, but usually ships don't get that and you have to have a dedicated support ship heal you if you want to regen these, uh, yeah, health points. Now, health points are also affected by armor. Now, not many ships have armor, but the ships that do, uh, they kind of, well, as the name implies, absorb damage. So here you can see that if a shell or a laser or missile or whatever hits this area right here, it does 0.4 damage. So I guess 40% of whatever damage it would have done if it would have hit like non-armored section of the ship. Now armor goes both ways. 
Uh, there's also armor which does like more damage than intended. These are like kind of weak points to kind of balance out a ship with armor, I guess. For example, the intakes here on the Zolgut do uh, 1.5 and these here do 1.25. So uh, yeah, that's those are kind of weak points that you should shoot for if you're like taking on a ship with armor. So uh, yeah, it's uh, important to kind of remember these spots, you know, as you play the game because you can kind of kill ships faster if you aim for them. Now the second most important statistic to look at are the shields. Now shields, they come in various uh, different types. Well, there's two main types. For example, here you have like normal shields. These are fitted on the vast majority of ships and they basically just, uh, yeah, soak up damage for you. And they have this uh, shield delay time. And this tells you how fast or how, how long it'll take for you to regen your shields. So for example, if you get shot, you take damage. And uh, yeah, then you have to wait 20 seconds of not getting shot to be able to regen your shield. If you're shot within that time, then the timer resets. And unfortunately, yeah, you yeah, will just kind of not be able to regen your shield. So you have to kind of make sure you're safe if you want to regen them. There's also this other statistic right here, which is shield recharge. It basically tells you how fast it recharges. Nothing really too special about that. And uh, this thing also here, uh, shield gating. Now shield gating is kind of uh, hard to explain in like words. So I'll kind of just show it here on the screen. But basically, you're able to uh, negate the damage of like large damage cannons. For example, the wave motion gun by having like a tiny amount of shield so that the wave motion gun hits the shield and like it doesn't do any damage to the hull after that. So the damage doesn't carry over. Um, there's also a second type of shields. Uh, if you go to the Halo Tech Tree, for example, and you go check out the Covenant ships, um, if you go, yeah, click on the shields here to view their statistics, you can see that they have uh, something called Tolerance. Now, Tolerance is, uh, yeah, basically it regens the shield as soon as you get hit, and it's, I guess, an additional kind of safe measure for if you're, like, getting hit by a ship that has, like, a very slow-firing, yeah, big damage cannon, you can kind of absorb the damage more because your shield recharges, uh, like, 10 here, for example, says every second. Now the way you counter these, uh, yeah, these shields here is you use like beam weapons because that just kind of eats away the tolerance. It doesn't give the shield time to regen. Uh, another important thing to know about tolerance shields is that usually they do not have shield gain. So a wave motion gun will go right through them regardless of if they have no shields or shields. Uh, it'll still do, uh, yeah, the damage it says it will do. So yeah, that's uh, thing, something to be, I guess, a bit careful about if you're playing. Uh, this type of ship where every cannon will do damage to you and shield getting won't be a thing. Alright, so now we can get into the third part of the statistics screen and that is of course the armament. Now each ship has like missiles and lasers. We're going to first cover lasers. Uh, here, if you click the statistics of one of them or just click them, then it'll show you how good it is and what it can do. So for example, here it says Per shot, it'll do 1,000 to 1,150 damage. Now, this is kind of RNG. It does a value in between those two, logically. Um, the second most important thing to know is also the shield damage multiplier. And this tells you how much damage it'll do against shields, logically. And, uh, you know, here on the harp, for example, it says it's 0 0.4, which means that if your show would have initially done 1,000 damage, it now only does 400. So maybe with this information, you can kind of, yeah make the conclusion that you probably shouldn't shoot ships with shields instead you should go after uh yeah ships but don't have them uh shield gate bypass as it says kind of uh, goes into the mechanic before except that if it says yes it just ignores shield gating and it goes straight through i believe uh the mac cannons in the halo tech tree have that if we go to the moncton here and uh, you can see here we go it has a shield gate bypass yes so this can go straight through um yeah any shield the target and do damage to the hole after as well. It also has a two times shield damage, so you can tell that this mac here, you're better off shooting at shielded targets because it does more damage against them. Now depending on the gun, you may also have this uh, statistic here called shots per burst. Basically if it says two, then it does two shots per like one click. So yeah, you do two times the amount of damage it says here on the stack card. Other than that, you also have other pieces of information here, such as the reload time, maximum range, muzzle velocity, and dispersion angle. 
Um, the probably most important statistic here is the maximum range. Uh, you don't really want to go under this range when you're fighting. So if it says 40 kilometers, you stick to 40 kilometers. Uh, you don't go any closer than that because the closer you get, the better of a target you are. So you kind of want to, uh, yeah, stay in this range, but not really like, uh, yeah, go too close to enemies. And plus another important statistic is the if it can auto aim and affect objectives. This is only relevant for the assault defense game mode. Basically, if it says no, it won't do any damage to objectives. And if they can auto aim, basically, uh, it means that sometimes uh, spinals and stuff, they don't have auto aim. Uh, if we go here back to the Shunrun actually and go check out the wave motion gun, you can see that it has um, no auto aim because it just doesn't tell you uh, that it can, which means that uh, it'll be you'll be able to independently aim these even if you have a target selected in auto aim and it's kind of useful if you kind of want to uh, yeah, pre-aim against targets and stuff like that but we'll get to that more in the strategy section of this video now I guess the second type of armament is of course missiles now missiles there isn't really too much difference between them uh, the only real difference you'll see is the uh, yeah, maximum range and also the speed Usually, the faster the well, not usually, the faster the missile, the better. You know, there's nothing really more to say about that um, because that just makes them harder to intercept for point defense. And here you can see, for example, these uh, heavy concussion missiles here have 5,000 meters a second. But if you go to the diamond boron missiles, you can see that these have 10,000 meters. So these are twice as fast, which means, well, I'm not sure if they're twice as harder to intercept, but uh, they are definitely more challenging and that just makes them more guaranteed to do damage. I guess the same as cannons, you also have a uh, reload time and uh, objective affecting and also the range, which you should also take into account. For example, if you're in Tyrant here, which is more of a yeah missile ship, you should probably stick to 60 kilometers or like a bit further, um, just because then you are still safe, but you also won't really get targeted by enemies um, because yeah you're nice and far away and they kind of have other people to shoot at. Now the third type of weapon you have in this game is the sustained beam. Now uh, here you can see for example on the Harbinger here, uh, it has a total duration of 7 seconds and it does 11,000 damage per second which adds up to 80,000 damage total. Now these also have depending on the ship like a shield multiplier or whatever, you know it's kind of the same as lasers and stuff. And it also has a set reload time and range so you kind of have to keep those in mind when you play the ship for example. Uh, you know, in the Harbinger here, you should probably be within 32 kilometers of your enemies because that's where you can actually do your main damage to them. Now, the fourth type of weapon you have is point defense. Uh, point defense comes in a lot of forms. Either they're more geared towards dealing with enemy fighters or geared towards dealing with missiles. The uh, Reaper point defense you can see right here does a pretty decent amount of damage actually and it reloads every 1.5 seconds. But you can see that the missile hit chance is 85%. So this thing is definitely geared more towards dealing with missiles rather than dealing with enemy fighters. Uh, that is the case, or that is uh, not the case for something like the Harp, which is more of an anti-air cruiser. And as the name states, it's uh, more geared towards shooting down planes. So here you can see that it does a whole lot more damage. has the same reload and uh, has an 80% hit chance of spacecraft, but only 40% for missiles. So you can see that these are more geared towards shooting down planes rather than, uh, what is it, missiles. There we go. Now you also have a couple like unique weapons in this game. They're kind of divided into the three types I said before, but uh, they're a bit special in their own way. For example, here on the Amateras, you can see that if you go to the uh, ram, it's marked as a sustained beam, but only has a range of one kilometer but it does a whole lot of damage. So these kind of weapons, yeah, they're a bit unique, but they're also, uh, yeah, quite cool. And you can kind of use this to, uh, yeah, ram people and do quite a lot of damage, surprisingly enough, to your enemies. Now, uh, there's also another type of special, I guess, beam weapon. If you go to the uh, halo tree and select the cradle, you can see that this thing is more geared towards healing people. As you can see right here, this is also a beam weapon but uh, it doesn't do damage per second, instead it does like one time damage. And you can see that it does, uh, yeah, it, sh it heals shield, uh, no it doesn't heal shields, it heals, um, yeah, friendly uh, hole points, but uh, yeah, 
these are kind of like more unique weapons which you sh can also use uh to your advantage i mean this thing's really a dedicated repair ship so you can't really use them for anything else but those are also weapons that you should uh, i guess keep in mind when playing the game now depending on the ship you may also have this additional statistic called the rate of fire booster uh, which increases the well, rate of fire of friendly ships in a certain radius which you can see right here under range now uh, you know different ships have uh, different modifiers but usually it's something like two times and these only last for a certain amount of time there's also another type of rate of fire booster uh, which is a uh, passive it applies uh, as long as you're still alive and uh, you know usually that's a bit less or quite a bit less but then again this also lasts for a continuous amount of period and also only affects a faction or a certain faction for example here on the mc85 you can see in the uh, very small text here on the bottom right it says buff the following factions in new republic so it can't really buff rebels it can't buff empire it only buffs uh, kind of this section of ships right here and a bit down here and a bit down here as well but uh yeah that's basically it for the abilities no it isn't actually because there is uh another ability if i can find it which is the interdiction field or electronic warfare or whatever it's called basically it makes missiles useless in this radius so for example someone shoots some missiles at you and you turn this electronic warfare ability on this essentially negates all the missiles and it gives you xp for negating them so that's also i guess another really useful way to both support your team and keep yourself alive now there's also the afterburner ability which you also find on some ships for example the numbak here in the spy tree you can see that it gives you a slight speed boost for a certain amount of time and then it has to relax for a bit this really works the same as really any other ability just this time you just move a bit faster there's also actually a ability which you can find in the expanse tree uh, i forgot what vehicle it's on uh if i can just find it uh well I guess plot armor 2 is another ability we can talk about but this basically just uh heals your health so uh, this is the ability that i was talking about before where you know not many ships can actually heal their health but this thing can because it has this ability uh if i can just find it really quickly there's also uh, an ability where you can increase your agility modifier for a short amount of time this is called flip and burn where i guess you can uh, yeah spin your ship really fast but you can't really go any faster so this is more geared towards like changing direction really quickly or uh yeah stuff like that Now in this game you have two forms of currency and two forms of XP. Currencies you have credits and gold. Credits you don't really have to worry about. I've never had an issue where I've never had enough credits. But uh, you know they exist when you have to like purchase a ship. For example uh, if you go to the expense tree here and go to the Scarico. You see that it requires 4 million credits to purchase. Um, other than that I don't think there really is another way of using credits anywhere. But um, yeah that's basically it. And uh, the second form of currency is gold. Now gold is primarily gained by like doing challenges or by buying it in the shop here. And there's no real other way of getting gold. Although I think like, you know, if you make a map and you get like second place or something on the Discord server, then you may be rewarded some gold if I'm wrong. Maybe not, I don't know. But um, yeah, that's also another way, but that's usually reserved for a very few number of people. So this is the only real way, or these two ways are the only real way to get gold. Now, as for XP, there's really two types. There's normal XP and FXP. XP is gained by just playing the game. Uh, usually the base modifier for XP is like roughly 25% of your score. This is kind of a rough estimate, but you know, it's just a rule of thumb. FXP is a currency that is kind of unique to, well, not unique, but it is instead of per ship, which this thing is right here, it's per tech tree. So no matter what ship I go here in the expense tech tree, for example, I'll still have the same amount of FXP. And uh, yeah, it uh, you also gain it a whole lot less. I forgot what the modifier was. But basically, FXP is really used to, I guess, boost your grind a bit. For example, if you're really close to researching a vehicle, you can just, uh, you know, use the convert free XP button here. Uh, let's say, you know, you want to convert 420 uh, free XP to ship XP. So if you just take a look at the top right here, press convert. And it adds 420 and it ducks 420. Of course, you can also do this the other way around. You can just go convert ship XP. The problem with doing this is that it costs gold. So I wouldn't really recommend it to anyone. 
but uh, you know you can do it if you want to but gold usually has better use cases for example when you want to buy like limited premiums and stuff for example when a new update releases they may like release a limited vehicle like something like the everest was something that they released that you uh, can no longer get sadly i also can't really show it because the map bands are in the way but um yeah maybe that's a better use case of uh, gold so i wouldn't really recommend using it to convert ship xp into free xp now another thing to look at in the hangar is the challenges which you see here on the bottom left now these challenges they are mostly useful to getting a bit of extra gold into your account here gold is a premium currency which we'll just talk about a bit later but basically this allows you to get gold and it's the only real other method to get gold other than to buy it with robux which you can do here on the uh, shop menu uh no you don't you do it on the buy gold menu <laughs> there we go but um yeah basically the challenges usually consist of like do damage or basic speed or score and usually they're divided into in total or in one run so in total it doesn't matter how many times you die it just adds up over time and eventually you complete the challenge the in one run challenge is basically you can't die you have to do it in one life and that's how you complete these challenges now once you have completed a challenge it'll show up here uh, as green so that means you completed it you got the rewards and that's all you need to know challenges refresh every eight hours so i guess you can just kind of just log in and uh yeah refresh them but you do have to join a game new you can't stay in the same game i don't think the challenges would refresh then so you have to exit out of the game or go back to the lobby or something and then once you rejoin there will be new challenges for you now as for purchasing ships, basically you go to your tech tree and you click on whatever ship you want to research. For example, the Ignite Terra, okay, maybe not, let's go to the MC-80A. Um, basically, you can see that it kind of leads off of the uh, MC-90 or whatever. And if you go to the bottom right, it tells you that you need 2.5 million XP in it. Now depending on the ship, this is not always the case. Sometimes there are ships where you require XP in two ships, or more even. But um... Yeah, basically, it's usually the ship behind it, but there are some rare cases, for example, you know, um, stuff like the Spirit of Fire requires the Epoch and Cradle to be able to purchase them. Now, to purchase the ship, there's kind of like this uh, golden frame around it, basically. If it has that, then you can buy it. So you click on it here, and it says, requires Tector with 1 million XP. And as you can see, the Tector is right there, and we have... The requirements met so it's actually green if you go look at the uh, xp requirement right there so let's just click purchase and there we go purchase successful and uh, yeah now we have it and it has deducted the 1 million xp from my sector now as you saw right there the only real way to unlock ships is to use your xp there's no real other way but you can speed up the grind and you can do that by using boosters now boosters are quite useful and, uh, you know, you have a very wide ranging, uh, you know, category booster. You have 10%, you have 25%, you have 50%, and you also eventually have 100 and 200. Um, you know, once you play the game enough, as you can see here, you get, uh, yeah, quite, quite a lot of them because you don't really use them because the thing with boosters is that they all have like a timer on them. So here it says on this 25% booster, it says you have 12 minutes. So in these 12 minutes, you get boosted by 25%, but you also can't activate another booster. So even if you would want to like activate, say, a 100 XP booster, you can't. So yeah, that's kind of the reason why I don't really use them too much. But if you're early to the game and you get one, you, you might as well use it. Usually, well, you only get boosters each time you win a battle. It ranges from like 3 to 4 to 5 to 6 or to 7 if you're like really good at the game. At that point, you wouldn't be watching this video though. So yeah, expect to get like three or two boosters depending on how well you do in game. Um, they go in various categories. You have like credits, you have XP, and you have mixed. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, XP only affects XP, credits affect only credits, and mixed affects both. Um, but yeah, there's also the 500% uh, boosters that you can buy here. They only, they cost gold though, so I wouldn't really recommend them. In fact, I don't recommend them because the gold is spent in a much better way on ships or premium ships or whatever. But you know, that's always uh, your choice to make when you're confronted with that issue. Another important thing to mention about the booster timer is that the timer is active even if it runs out if you're spawned in. So let's say you spawn in, you click to deploy to battle, 
when your booster is going to run out in like 5 seconds, well, that booster will remain active for the duration you are alive. So technically, you know, you can kind of cheese the 200% booster if it's really, you know, getting close. You just hold W against the enemy, do as much damage as possible, die, and then spawn again. And then you'll have like kind of two 200% boosters. Right, so we're actually getting close to actually being able to finally uh, spawn in here. But before we do that, I just want to quickly show you guys my uh, settings, which you can access by pressing tab and then the gear icon right here. Uh, here you have settings like music and you also have like rendering and whatnot. You can basically mirror my settings if you want to, if you don't want to read them all. But um, you know, I have mine set to like some are more for performance and others are more for visual effect. You can choose however you want to uh, yeah, set them because I mean, some do have quite a large effect. But, uh, you know, it's really personal preference at this point. All right, so let's spawn in here by clicking the big uh, deploy to battle button here at the top. And, uh, you know, if you've just newly joined a lobby, something that I do, uh, I guess, recommend you do is to turn auto aim on. Now, you can do that in quite a different uh, number of ways. You can either press this button here on the bottom right, or you can actually press the grav key on your keyboard, which you probably never use in real life, or at least very rarely use, but... Uh, yeah, you, you can use in this situation. And there we go. Now that we turned it on, we don't have to manually aim the cannons ourselves. Especially if you're in a ship with like a lot of different lasers and stuff. You're better off maneuvering than manually aiming. At least in my opinion. So uh, yeah, that's why I usually have auto aim on. Another thing you can also do is, uh, yeah, launch fighters. I'm going to do a more in-depth tutorial on, um, what is it? Yeah, carrier gameplay sometime uh, later. But yeah, basically, if you in a ship that's like low rank, it's basically better to just, uh, you know, deploy them here and click guard. If you uh, noticed, I did have also a 45 second uh, spawn protection timer that only lasts when you're, um, what is it? When you're not moving, as soon as you start moving, uh, yeah, you're going to get missiled, shot at, whatever. Now, as for basic controls, um, it's pretty simple. It's uh, W and S to kind of pitch up and down, A and D to kind of go left and right, and then Q and E to roll. You can see how your ship is like moving by looking at this like square here in the middle. But um, yeah, I guess to accelerate, then you can just press F. I mean R. <laughs> F is to decelerate, and uh, yeah, as soon as you start moving forward, you don't have to hold the throttle. You can just relax and focus more on aiming. All right, so as soon as you want to engage somebody and you want your auto aim to work, basically what you can do is, um, well, maybe this isn't the best ship to demonstrate on, but basically you press the C key to target them and then you aim your guns up. And as you can see right here, my mouse is right here. The guns are right there and I can just engage them how I like. Now, um, yeah, here, we'll just basically press, I guess, the one key to fire our guns and then the two key to fire off the missiles. And then we'll just quickly scurry away because we don't want to get hit by anything. So let's say you want to target somebody else. The way you do that is you just press C on another target or you can press V to completely deselect anyone. Um, you can also press Z or what was the key again? I forgot. Oh no, V is to select friendlies. Never mind. But yeah, basically you can select Z to deselect, C to target enemies and V to target friendlies. Um, the situation where you want to target friendlies is like when you want to guard them with fighters or when you want to heal them, then it's easier to just lock them like that. But I usually just want to kind of press C on people, launch your missiles, fire your guns, and uh, yeah, all the parallax and stuff will automatically kind of correct itself, so you don't have to worry about that. If you're not selecting someone and you're shooting at them even with manual aim, then like with parallax and stuff, you won't have a good time. So that's why I always recommend you to, uh, yeah, use auto aim or at the very least target people so that your, um, yeah, cannons actually properly hit them. A situation where you might not want to be using auto aim is to like kind of cheese a shot around corners where the center of mass of the enemy ship is like not in a desirable location. So for example, with this Star Destroyer here, I'm actually going to engage my shell so that I don't get mashed by someone's fighters. But let's say you want to like engage someone who's got a corner of his ship peeking around a corner. So we're just going to try and go demonstrate this here on this Star Destroyer. As you can see, 
The center of the ship, if I use auto aim, it's pointing towards the wall. Not good, however, if you turn it off here, you can kind of just shoot him. And uh, yeah, we will actually be able to do damage. I should probably go after this guy though, um, because he's low on health. But yeah, that's basically how to use auto aim or how to aim in general. And yeah, hopefully it has been useful to you. Also, I should not have launched those missiles. Now each ship, or not each ship, but ships that have an ability, uh, if you don't know how to trigger it, there's a little control button here on the bottom where it says T, or uh, there's also this toggle dual purpose button which you can press, and it kind of turns half or like some amount of your lasers into anti-air cannons which you don't manually control, but are automatically then controlled by the uh, by the game. And this is really useful when you're in ships that are more like oriented towards defense, like this uh, ship right here, the Immobilizer, where, you know, if you want to shoot down more planes, you just turn your cannons into dual purpose air cannons, and you can kind of let them do their own thing. And uh, yeah, like I said, the ability to, or to toggle your ability, you just press whatever buttons here. Depending on the ability, it may be a different control, but you can, you can always just check down here. Now, something else that you can do in this uh, bottom menu right here is you can actually disable and enable different weapons. Now, usually you want to have them all enabled in general, but, um, you know, let's say... Hold on, let me try and get into a position here. You want to target that squid only with your suppressor missiles because your harpoons have a very bad shield modifier, so you just disable the harpoons by clicking it. It kind of like turns less gray or it turns like transparent and then you can send your missiles away this isn't really good for demonstrations he's gone behind cover now but hopefully you do get the point and then afterwards you can i guess focus your harpoons on a target which doesn't have any shields sadly there's none here to demonstrate on but i hope you uh you know understand what i am talking about usually though this isn't really worth it or it's not worth the effort usually it's better to just send a bunch of missiles against one's target so that they more of them hit and uh, yeah, it's more of a waste of time, so it's something that you can do if you really want to micromanage everything, but I personally don't bother and I don't really think it's worth your time either. Now there's also another control here that you could uh, sort of use, and that is camera lock. Now camera lock isn't too useful. Uh, you toggle it by pressing the comma button, as you can see my camera is kind of locked onto the sovereign right here. And what it basically does, it allows you to kind of keep focus on a target while uh, still kind of maneuvering. So if you want to, for example, be, uh, however, you have a lot of weapons which are manually aimed. So what you do is you just turn on your camera lock and then you kind of just start firing away. And then uh, you kind of maintain lock on him while still, uh, yeah, kind of maneuvering around. Admittedly, this maybe isn't the best of examples because I'm not in range yet, but uh, you know, you do, you do get the point, I hope. Now, when using ships, something else that you can actually take advantage of is the faction XP bonus. You can check which uh, faction is getting the bonus by pressing the tab button and then seeing what team you're in, which would be this one right here, the Reapers. All right, so we can go to the Mass Effect, choose a Reaper ship. Let's choose the Harbinger. Click the boy, deploy to battle. And, uh, you know, as soon as we spawn in, it should tell us that we have a uh, XP bonus here. It says you will earn 25% more XP or using faction ship or whatever so basically that's another way of uh, speeding up your grind but uh, you know it's usually you don't really get the faction you want the uh, booster to be in so it's you know it's useful when you have it but assume you don't all right so here we uh, just died and as you can see we have the uh, ship xp gained here but you can also see that there's a bit of a faction bonus right here which you can see and see right here as well so that is i guess the extra 25 percent which we uh, get from spawning in a faction vehicle. Now, as for game modes in this game, there are currently, I believe, four main game modes. There's Deathmatch, there's Fleet Battles, Assault Defense, and Domination. A Deathmatch is pretty simple. One kill equals one point for the team. Uh, nothing much more to say to that. It's better to spawn in like more beefier, heavy-hitting ships in that game mode. Um, the next is Fleet Battles. It's kind of similar to Deathmatch, where there's like no central objective but you're better spawning off in something that doesn't have a lot of health. So something like stealth ships, like the uh, Normandy 
SR2 or SR1, or something like the, uh, where is it? If I go find it, like right here, the RPV are very good in fleet battles because they usually dish out more damage than they are worth. Um, because if fleet battles, it basically adds up your health and that's the amount of score the enemy team gets once they kill you. So the less score or the less health you have, the better. And uh, ships like the RPV and CPV usually do more damage than their health before they die, even if they do constantly get shot. So that's why these are very good candidates for, uh, yeah, those types of battles. I guess if you want to be extra toxic, what you can do is you can kind of, in the rank 5 lobby, switch between CPV and uh, Ushvaima because, you know, they have low health but high damage output, so you can kind of annoy the enemy team that way. Or just use a Normandy that's also equally as annoying because it only has something like, uh, let me pull up the calculator really quickly. Uh, it only has something like, I don't even know why I need a calculator for that, but, um, it, you know, it only has 28,000 health, but it can do more than that in like two salvos, so it's just better to spawn in that in fleet battles instead of something like a resurgent, which has, uh, you know, a whole lot more health, or like an allegiance, which has, uh, you know, upwards of even, um, where is it? Yeah, upwards of like 150,000 health combined with shields and, uh, you know, hit points, because, yeah, it's just not really a good move for the team. Assault defense is uh, pretty standard. Uh, it's basically just there's an objective or three objectives and you have to destroy them or defend them before the game ticks down. Usually the assault side has the very clear advantage because the objectives, they don't heal or anything. So if you just, if you just keep respawning and keep spamming their objectives, um, you know, you eventually destroy them. You do have to pay attention though that if they're red, it means that you're not in range. Even if your like normal weapons are in range, the objective has to like yeah, be able to be shot. So if it's green, then you can shoot it. If it's not, then you can't. And yeah, you just have to get close enough. Usually it's something like 25 or 20 kilometers. Pretty simple stuff. Now I guess finally, there's uh, domination. Domination, there's like usually like three or one capture zone in the middle. You just go capture it. Uh, you can actually capture, or usually you can't capture in stealth ships. However, if you never trigger the stealth and you just uh, proceed like a normal ship towards the capture zone, you can actually capture it even if you're in a stealth ship. But as soon as you toggle that ability once, you won't be able to, yeah, capture it anymore. Same goes for something like the RPV, which has the slow space jump ability, where it kind of makes you like temporarily invisible. That's what, uh, yeah, it doesn't, yeah, that's why you can't capture the zones. So, uh, yeah, always go in like maybe like a fast ship at the start, just rush the point capture it, and then have your team contest it. That's uh, usually a pretty good formula to winning those types of games. Alright, so now as for playstyles, there's usually like four main types that you can choose from. The first and most basic one is literally just, uh, here we go, spawn in, select the target, and uh, shoot, and kind of like slowly advance, or just stay in your spawn. Uh, and you just kind of kind of just don't do really anything at all. This is really the most basic. You do this in ships which can't really maneuver, or even if you would maneuver, there would be no point in maneuvering. Something like the Resurgent here is a very heavy ship which only goes something like uh, 10 ZKT. You're not dodging anything in that, so you might as well just be a stationary target and uh, kind of, uh, I guess, lurk in the shadows to try and survive long enough, but evidently that is uh, not quite working for me here, but... Yeah, you kind of act as a sponge at the same time when you're in those types of ships, so that's something that you do get used to eventually. Now, another very popular playstyle is looping or like waving. Basically, as the name sounds, you don't just move in a straight line. Instead, you kind of move in a loop pattern. Now, we're just going to quickly show that here. We're going to fire off our wave motion gun, and uh, we are just going to start kind of holding the S key, go broadside, and uh, yeah, just be a very unpleasant target to shoot at because because of the lag of this game, the lasers don't really aim at you and the auto-aim doesn't really take like, uh, I don't know, ship rotation or how the ship's movement is going to be into account as well or that good, so that's why you can kind of dodge a lot of shells when you uh, loop like this. Usually looping is really reserved for ships that have like a high man maneuverability 
But even if you don't, it can sometimes work. I mean, you know, in the looping predator is a classic, which, uh, you know, you sometimes see, but, uh, you know, in general, high mobility, uh, maneuverability is kind of necessary to be able to uh, loop and stuff. Hey, another thing which you can do, which isn't really going in a straight line or waving, is to kind of go goblin mode, how I like to call it. This is only really available in stealth ships. Basically, you kind of duck in and out of cover and you kind of launch your missiles, fire off your weapons, and you run away before enemy fighters or missiles can touch you. Uh, this is especially effective in the Normandy SR1 and SR2. That's why people also hate facing this thing, because it's extremely annoying. Um, but I love playing it, I think it's really fun, so if you want to just have a lot of fun, then just rush the Normandy. It's a fairly easy grind, and it's also very, very fun to play. Now, if you're in something like a healer or a still, uh, not a still ship, a uh, carrier, you can kind of go carrier mode like this gentleman right here is doing and kind of sit behind a wall and uh, camp there. There's no reason for you to go anywhere else. Uh, this admittedly is not the best, uh, yeah. <laughs> showing of this thing or that gameplay style because I was just freshly spawn killed so maybe I should not have joined this battle but um you know basically you just kind of hide behind walls you yeah do carrier things you do healer things you do interdiction field things but you don't really go like directly engage someone that is also something that you can do and is something that I recommend you'd also do on carrier maps like Phantom Wreck UNSC Moon and uh, I don't know whatever other map I can think of where you can really only do carrier stuff. All right, now that really does it for uh, this episode here. Hopefully, or episode in this video. Uh, hopefully, you have enjoyed it. I will probably make like a part two tutorial video if this uh, if this one gets relatively positive reception. But uh, yeah, until then, enjoy uh, enjoy Stardust join join us it's a fun game and uh yeah i'll see you guys in the next video then goodbye